This is Belizean Legends and today we'll be speaking with uh, Brother David and that is Brother, Brother David. Uh, we will be talking about this legendary Belizean artist's life from his movement from Belize from Los Angeles in 1983 all the way up to Belize when he migrated into Belize and his dynamic work that he has been able to lay down in terms of Belizean music and Belizean black history. Uh, Brother David is not only a renowned Belizean musician with a high caliber under his belt, but he's also a Belizean activist and one who has done a tremendous amount of work in terms of the Belizean black people. Brother David, I want to welcome you to Belizean Legends. Thanks very much, Brother, for having me. You became one of Belize's repatriating artists in that means that you have left Los Angeles where you migrated in the 60s and you came you lived in Los Angeles for a long period of time where you became an awesome musician you played rock and roll yeah, you for a, a guitar player and you for a period of time you you mimic the original Jimi Hendrix style one of my greatest inspirators and very much so. And I remember you in 1983, you were then a reggae artist at that time. Yeah. Uh, talk about that period. Give our viewers an understanding of what that period was like for Brother David in well, Los Angeles. Well, like, um, like Hendrix was a great inspirator with the instrument, the guitar. And Peter Tash and Bob Marley were great inspirators through the lyrical context. You know, so... Um, what I did basically uh, in that time around 1981, 82, reggae music was just coming to Los Angeles. And um, I had just passed through the rock and roll era. And when I heard about reggae music, I said, well, this is from the Caribbean. And then the lyrical context really got my, got my attention. I was fortunate to be around some of the local musicians that got me involved in meeting some of the Jamaican musicians that came from the island. That was a whole spiritual upliftment at that time. Um, I had already lived in New York also, and I had a band in New York and in Los Angeles. So I decided to put our own group together representing Belize by the name of Unity. And that group consisted of on drums, my second oldest son, Ricky, and Raymond Barrow on bass, um, Lesman Sosa on guitar, and a young um, Afro-American um, by the name of Greg, 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 Craig Tumlin on keyboard. And you know, we had a really good vibe between us. Uh, so we were able to fit into the reggae scene, um, known to the people as Unity. Um, and we were part of building this script, Bob Marley Day shows that they have for two days. We were part of the group that helped to build that, you know? Uh, that was really a very strong spiritual time. Yeah. I remember that very well. The band Unity Raymond Barrow. I remember driving all the way up to Santa Barbara yeah. in 1983 to see you perform. I remember that You know, too. and uh, songs like uh, Land of the Free, Belize. That you just came out with that first album. What was the name of that album again? No Fear. No Fear. A matter of fact, on that No Fear album and that very track that I just mentioned, we use that as the signature tune on Belize Caribbean Pulse and KPFK in Los Angeles. That many was years, for many, many, many years. years we used that. One thank you too. guys again too because that was a great upliftment for, for the media artists. You know? yes, yes. Hearing somebody using your song for a signature tune, yes. which still happens in Damriga in my hometown. So many days I'm in Damriga and I'm saying, wow, this is really cool. For now you're home. Yeah. And, and the radio station in Damriga is finding your music to be a signature tune, you know? Yeah. Very satisfying, you know? Very you know, much. These things help you a lot, you know? Very much. And when you talk about that also, what comes to mind is that we play you a lot on Belize Caribbean Pulse because the, the No Fear album contained a lot of dynamic tracks. Mm -hmm. And uh, you appear to have been experimenting with the Congo song from that time. Talk yes. about that. Well, the first song on the album, the very first song, the name of it was Congo. And then the hit song from that album, I think it was the first Belizean classic hit, was the song Experience. When that went to Belize, it was like 
Belize had never heard anything like this from a Belize, you know. So that was a great, great experience. Up until today, a lot of people still use the word experience to, to send a message and to express true feelings, right? So that was from that, that album also, and the, the song Land of the Free Belize. That, that was, a, a, I had started to blow the trumpet in, in saying to the Belizean people, we need to be proud Belizeans, you know, and, and be, make noise about it, you know, be, be proud Belizeans. And it did work because like, when Belize, they also used the song for a signature song. You know, um, put it this way, the musician, if you're blessed with the inspiration, you're usually futuristic looking. And that whole album was futuristic looking. Um, that was Congo, um, Experience, Land of the Feet, and Dancing. Yes, Dancing, beautiful uh, yeah, track right yes, there. Yes, and yeah. as a matter of fact, I, had, I have a guy right now, for the last six months that has been communicating with me, that has a radio program somewhere in Orlando. And that's the song that he first initiated or come, he, he was asking me if I could please send him this song. But he wanted the, the um, cause it, it was like the vocal tracks and it was also the instrumental tracks. Right. right. This was kind of like still strange. In this 2015, somebody is emailing you asking you for the song dancing that came off of your first album. Because he wanted to use it for a signature song. You know, and, you know that, that's really it. You know, indeed, indeed. So, that, so I, uh, it, what he did was motivated me then to make CDs from the albums because I still had a copy of each album. You know, that we did about three albums in those days. It was records. Yes. And Stone Tree, and I took it to Stone and Stone and, and Joshi, and he made some um, CDs for us from it. So that guy kind of motivated me to do that because right. before I just had the record. You know? Yes. Um, we want to talk about what. You, your your style is the Congo music you created. Uh, you innovated a style of Belizean music that is very um, dynamic. In that you appear to have taken Belizean Creole broke down and fused it with Garifuna Paranda. Mm -hmm. Is that what you actually did when you created Congo? Talk about that. No, remember no, when, when I started Congo, um, we wasn't even hearing about broke down or Paranda. But I was thinking Caribbean. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I'm thinking Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. And um, one of the experiences that really compelled that idea was one night we went to listen to Dells and the Sensation, which was a group that was playing reggae music and all of those Caribbean music. Long time reggae. These guys were playing it at dance and things like that. You know, reggae wasn't known to people. We just knew it was a Caribbean beat coming from Jamaica. And I remember the Jamaican brothers was just starting to come to Los Angeles because mainly they lived in New York. Yes. And they came to the show and we were backstage and one of the Jamaican brothers made a comment that Dells wasn't really playing reggae. You know, and, and it hit me right then, you know, wait a minute, Belize doesn't really have a music. You know, as I'm a musician and I'm saying, Belize don't have a music, you know, this guy. So that puts him in a position to be able to critique that music whether it be positive or negative, I said, but if you create your own music, nobody can really critique it negatively. Or, you know, yeah, so. you're the so. one that is great. And yeah. at that moment, the idea of creating Congo music came to me. And um, we had already contributed a lot to the reggae music, but Belize didn't have a music as such. We did have broke down, but nobody was really paying attention to broke down in that time. Because yeah. when I went home, I had to work with Mr. Peters and we tried to develop the lockdown music again, right? But at that moment when that guy made that comment, it hit me that we need to have our own music. Yes. And I did some meditation on it and I came up with the word Congo because Congo, I knew when we were small, we use it meaning let's go. Yeah. It's yeah. a plural word, it's a positive type of a thing, it's yeah. kind of like companionship, yeah. let's go, Congo. Yeah. From the Creole dialect, Congo, let's go. Yeah, but yeah. you see, we use the word Creole, but because of my awareness, I know it's more African. African, very much so. Very Congo much is so. more African. Yes, right? yes, yes. So, yeah. that's how Congo music really got started, right? Yeah. And then, um, I was ready then from performing with the Jamaicans and learning more about my African history from the Jamaicans, because they brought a lot of knowledge with them when they brought the reggae music. And um, I remember being a, in a place and time with some of the brothers where um, I think, I don't remember his name right now, but one of the real strong reggae artists. And um, he said, like, Brother David, you know, you, you, you were very strong. Your personality is very strong in the music. Why don't you take it home? 
because out here you you just be like a number. They say, but if you go home, you could affect your country a lot. From what I hear, that you you do among the brothers, that are there. he just kind of picked me out, you know. Yeah. And and that was resonated in my mind too. You know? And I was already kind of thinking beliefs because of the awareness. Yeah. Now you're getting aware, you know. You're like, I need to go home and, and check also because I hadn't been home in a long time at that time. And one thing led to the other. I decided, let me see if I can finish an album and take it home. And this is the birth of Congo music. And uh, give thanks, it, it, it worked. You know, the people appreciated the music, the timing was right, and the rest is like history. history in the sense. Indeed. Over the years, as you lived back in Belize, and beautiful history story that you gave in terms of your transition from the United States back into Belize, and how that consciousness played out. Who were the forces that were behind it that encouraged you to do that? As you spoke, speak about the Jamaicans, yeah. but as you as you live back in Belize again, over the years we noticed that the Congo music begin to become more refined. So when I went home and uh, No Fear was the first album, and then we did Congo music. And when I did Congo music, she made a comment to me, said, "Now your music is starting to be more Belizean." Yeah, you know, yes. and, and and that was kind of touching, you know, what. Um, and then I said to myself, okay, and then Mr. Peter started to like ask me, why don't you come and play with me and you know, thing. and that was like going to the University of, of the Afro-Belizean music, it, they call it Creole music, right? but it's really the Afro-Belizean, Afro yeah, Mr. Peter yeah, is the Afro-Belizean person. Very much so, very really. much so. So I yeah. got connected to that music very easily and, and I listened to the music and I'm saying this music is easy, but when I went to play it wasn't that easy, simple because your spirit. Yes, it's a feeling music. Yeah, your spirit from yeah. living in America from all these years, yeah. you know, it's not, you hear the songs easy, but you have to have a spirit yeah. to play. It's, it's right? a feeling. It's a feeling. Yeah. And I started to play Mr. Peters and I remember sometimes when I would be playing with him and, and we would make the car changes, he would, he would be doing his head like that. Yeah, to yeah. tell me well it's time to it's change. Right. Yeah, yeah. You picked up vibe. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I really wasn't even, I, I, as a strong a musician as I was, I really wasn't hearing the changes. Yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. cultural, right? Exactly, improvisation. So um I spent a lot of time with Mr. Peters, you know, contributing my professional experience to Mr. Peters. And he contributed a lot of his experience and the, the culture. Yeah. And made the culture to me and my son Nekuma. And at that time, I used to take India with me too. Yeah. You know, so India yeah. got some of it too. Right. And that started to, like you say, shape the music into yeah. a Belizean song yeah. and music. You know, yeah. and then I started to enjoy it. You know, yeah. I said, oh yeah, you know. And, and then, then what happened now? Instead of just using the Belizean song and music, I incorporated what I had learned in America inside of that. Yeah, you can hear the rock and roll. You, you think you put that Guitars. in? Guitars. That's right, yeah. make it international. Yeah, you know? yeah. And hey, this is working for people that come to visit the guests. Yeah. They like it because they yeah. identify with it. You yes. know? This yeah. is unique because mostly in Belize, the Belizean musician doesn't hear that because he didn't play rock and roll. Right. We don't have a lot of guitars. Yeah, there. Very now much. we're having some rock groups, right? Very much. And yeah. But they haven't started to incorporate that song into the uh, Punta rock music or, the, or it's in the Congo music. Yeah. Eventually, we put that song in there. Yeah. Then the music will go to another level. But the brothers haven't really hit that note yet. Yes. And then, remember now I'm from Dangriga in a sense. I grew up in Dangriga. Yeah. So after yeah. establishing myself in Belize City, I think I, I lived in Belize City for maybe 10, 12 years before I started to progress to Dangriga. And then when I went to Dangriga, you know, you're back home now. Yeah. And then now you start to feel. When I, when I got there, I got to some of the guys from Sun City and then we started to push the music in yeah. Danriga together. Yeah. And yeah. Penn was, was the your capital then. That's right. Yeah. Penn was the only one that did the triple shell type vibes. Yeah. Yeah. And then now we started to add um, keyboards. And Encanta, and, which is the original of the, which original is the creator of the Kuntara. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, in Penn music, it's like the drums and the triple shell and he plays his guitar. Now we started to incorporate the, the, the keyboards and all of that. So we started to create another kind of a punter rock. This is the one that, that's like Song City, um, Songs Incorporated, um, Poots of Titty Man. Um, you know, th these are some of the... Yeah. the, the uh, Mohobo. Mohobo. That, that, yeah. that, that punter rock is different. 
Chico Ramos and then Chico Ramos. Different, that's yeah, different from yeah. Punta Rap that's Super G and these younger musicians yeah, yeah, exactly. are doing now. They take it to another level. Another level. Yeah. So I was in there with my Kumu music. Yeah. Incorporating now I'm co inco incorporating whatever drum songs I hear from my girlfriend or brothers, I yeah. incorporate this into Kumu yeah. music. Cause that was lacking, cause yeah. it was just like the keyboards, guitar, and the drum set, and the crew was always playing the live drum set. Yeah. And then when you put start, put some of that element in it, now the crew yeah. music, now it's starting to take shape, you know? Yeah, when you hear a song like um, Warrior Pan, I don't know, but you could hear that paranda. You could hear that. You could hear that paranda. But it's our everyone is so into of your refinement of the of the Congo song. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so hard that you choose a song and like listen to you know people still have not really heard that song. Look at that. Amazing. And because the history yeah. that I'm talking about in that song, yeah. Is really yeah, some serious history. Serious that right history I'm talking about yeah, there, about yeah, where yeah. the black people live, yeah, exactly. where the African people lived in Belize City, yes. and the different tongues that Ibo they tongue had. And Ibo all Ibo all tongue and yeah. I can't have to from my head right now, but mm -hmm. I'm talking about these places, and people used to come from all over. Yeah, you know the African people used to come from all over to meet in these places to celebrate when they came from the camp. You see, when yeah, they came from the camp. You mentioned that in um, uh, Ghana, the plantation. Da, 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 da. That, that is another no. beautiful Congo song with the black tongue and the punta uh, and the Check this out. <laughs> My plantation again because of our people again. Yeah. The Afro Belizean again. Yes, yes. These are the black people that didn't stay within the the the, the, can't, the, can, the confines of the Europeans, but they left and they went to Gaines Point Manantee. They always refer to them as the runaway slaves. Yes. Now check it out, these are not Creole people. Yeah. These are the runaways, these are African Black people. slave rebellions. That's and what they, you were talking about. They live in <laughs> Gears Point and they yeah. are the ones now that have kept the Sambai music from that. And a lot of people in Belize have not heard the Sambai music. Very much so. Very when I went there and I heard this thing, when I said, man, check this out. And I'm feeling, I said, this is Africa all over yeah. again. The plantation is intricately Sambai. It's Sambai. <laughs> Some uh, my plantation is Sambai, much of that is Sambai, yes. old house is Sambai. Yes, yes. But what I did when I heard, for, we recorded it in the in the original form with the drums and the, the singing. Yeah. But the people in Belize didn't catch it. They didn't play it on the radio station enough, and it just didn't click, right? Because at that time we had the the, the punta music coming in too, so that was easier to relate to. Yeah. Because remember, Belize haven't heard the Sambai for a long time. Yeah. Unless you went to be as This was yeah. not a music that was everywhere. Yes. So when I, I said, no man, this music can't waste just like this. Yeah. I will combine the Kumu music with the Sambai. Yes. Because yes. It, now, now the people are starting to catch on to the Kumu rhythm. So they'll accept the Kumu rhythm. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the lyrical comments... And they hear themselves in it, the crew. The black people of Belize call Creoles are and hearing and broke down in it yes. and Sambai and the Garifuna people, the other black people of Belize is hearing Paranda inside, inside the music. So they're feeling the music and, are, and the lyrical context yeah, is, to, is totally positive. So mm -hmm. this is kind of like unusual in the environment to what, hey, we love this yeah. Belizean product experience, yeah, exactly. stand up Belizean. Yeah, hey, this brother, yeah. he's the single one thing where usually the Belizean artists are single. Exactly. That's where I learned from the Jamaican also. Yes. The positive, yes. the exactly. lyrical context. And you have been very consistent with that, brother, uh, brother David. Only that I know you, you, are, you have not changed a bit in terms from the day you, you left out of the United States with that Congo song. You landed in Belize, you kept on refining it, refining it, and yeah. putting it to a higher level all the time, all yeah. the time, to the way you are right now. And um, and the beauty about that is, like, now we have a lot more help. Yeah. You know, now over the years, because when I first went to Belize, my life was fine, musician, to think about what I was thinking about right. coming out of this environment. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't easy. Very much so. But um, I, um, my whole journey was home to share what I had learned. Right. So when, even though it wasn't easy, it was easy, yeah. if you know what I mean, yeah. because you know I do nothing else anyway. This exactly. is what you came to do, yeah. and and I got full support from the people in Belize. That, that that that's like the key. Yes, I got full support from all the areas you could from the media. I mean, it's not like a hundred percent. You will have mm -hmm. a little, but but the media, the politicians, the people, the establishment, everybody put in yes. to help 
build the music. Yes. Even though I wasn't necessarily talking what maybe a lot of the um the whole people would have preferred, but mm -hmm. they even even they were willing to assist yeah. what I was doing yeah. because it was positive. Yeah. Remember, you know, positive is overrule over negative. There you go. There Every you time. Go. There and you I go. knew that. So yeah. my journey I knew it was going to be a little bit longer. Yeah. But a little bit more interesting. Yeah. Talk about the new album. Um Mama Africa. Um I know that you have kept the Kumba song uh still very much positively and deeply involved in this project. Talk about um the Mama Africa project. Well, what is a, what is different or new about this new album? Well no, after I have sung songs of freedom. My plantation, Mochila, which which is very cultural, and the mu the, the meaning in India is is very um kind of like past. It's, it's just repetitious, but you, you do that too to connect with the people in work. The people loved it. Um, I decided, okay, I'm really not interested in continuing to do that because the musician is the original priest to the people. We have something very important that we need to do within our lifetime when you're a musician share as much of the knowledge that you get with the people through music, especially Afro-American people, because that's where our strength lies in the music. Very much so. So, maybe I don't know how many more albums I'll do, but I say, no, this is the time now I have to really start sharing the message of Mama Africa with my people. Simply because, like, in a country like Belize, you don't hear a lot of conversations about Africa. Very much so. Very much because that's not the teaching. Yeah. It, it, it's not downtrodden, but it's not brought to the people. Yeah. For example, you don't have that in primary school. There's not a teacher. I remember when I was, when I started high school, I always remember this. Our teacher was teaching us about Roman history. Yeah. What that has to do with me. Yeah. And, and that teacher, when I look back and unfortunately sometime when he came in, that, that guy was smelly of alcohol. Yeah. I, I'm sure that black man yeah. suffered because he was teaching black children about Roman history when, when he knew that it didn't have nothing to do with us. But it was a job. Yeah. I'm looking at it like this, you know. Yeah. And and up until today, um, I was doing a lecture at um, Tampic Ecumenical High School about a month ago, pertaining to this very topic on the Afro Belizean, because like I said, we don't touch it enough, you know. Yeah. And um, that's the only school that I I, I think we are doing some sort of African history. Yeah. Which should be done at a primary level. Very much so. Yeah. Very but remember, so. in our political system, the educational system, usually the ministers of those departments, if that minister is not aware himself mm -hmm. of how important it is for the school to get it, yes. then he, that would not be his main interest, interest. to do it. Yes. It's just like to say that if a minister never did play sports, that's right. He cannot become a good minister of sports not because he has never been an athlete in yeah, his life. Not that he cannot be, but he's more likely yeah, not to well be. Said. Same thing with music. Same thing with music. And, and uh, same thing with history. Same thing. Same thing with and that's why, like, when I went home, I had to do so many changes in the music to to fit with the people too. Because there's no point in me just playing the music the way yeah, exactly. I like I'm living in exactly. America. I didn't want to yeah, miss you it. You make it adjust to the people's conditions and yes. the people's life like and the vibes. Standing and yeah, that they thing. will reject it once they yes. it's not connected to them, they will not want to hear Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah. and I, I was aware of that because I made that mistake when I was playing rock music. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, we got yeah. into three-piece marshals and mm -hmm. big rock music, high boots and all, yeah. all that yeah. stuff, right? Yes. Yes. And, and we came down to the Belize um, program, 10th yeah. of September, because we started the Belize 10th of September program yeah. that we have in Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York. Wow. We are the people that started that in Los Angeles. Yes. September time, we got together, we brought a little yeah. PSG. Day in the Park events. And Day yeah. in the Park. Yeah. And when yeah. We, the first show, if, when you go back to history, the first show that we did, when we did that program, it was a rock group that I brought to the program. Wow, look at that. Yeah. The three piece rock group, it was yeah. me, Manny, and Len. Hey. You did? Yeah. Let me so I think have that, yeah. that, that video yeah. from that from that yeah. So you know I understand yeah. that and, and, yeah. and it was like we we the three piece group, we played for Belizean people and they, let's say hundred people was out there, maybe two or three people enjoyed what you did in the sense because only two or three people understood what you were doing. You were doing. Exactly. You did? So I learned in element if you want to connect with the people, you have to meet the people so you can't just do what you want. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And, and a young musician plenty of times has to learn that because when you're learning and 
and you are strong, determined in the decision, and you want to do what you want, you want to do. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes you have to say, no, 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 in life you can't just do what you want. Exactly. Sometimes you have to make shift to adjust. Just to be. Yeah. And I, I'm Very glad important. I learned that. Yeah. And that's what I did in Belize. I had enough time to think it out and to try it. And now we are blessed with our own recording studio. So from this album, when you listen to this album, you can really hear um, the expression of Brother David Obi and yeah. Tribal Vibes yeah. even more because along the way we did a lot of this adjustment type yeah. thing. And you had control over the music, meaning um, that you did it by us. You did this it one, yeah, we really had control yeah, over it. Yeah, full, you know, full 100% I mean, control yes, over it. That makes a lot Engineering of and everything like everything. that. Yeah, you, yeah. you know what you wanted. All these years now, you know exactly what that song is supposed to sound like. Correct. And you had full control over this Full one. control, and I get yeah. a lot of help now from the young musicians that are engineers because yeah. they're the ones that have to teach Very us all so. these computer yes, stuff. Yes, they know so, all the you know, the, yeah. the, the youths really, I depend on the youths now. Mm -hmm. It's come to that point, right? I know, I have the know-how, but I don't have the technology know-how, yeah. but I'm pretty good with it, but the youths really know it. So when I, when I have to call someone to come and help, they're always willing to come and help and show me. Yeah. So that was really yeah. um, I like it. Even the guy that, that makes our jacket now, he's been making uh, our jackets for Yeah. All well, made in Belize. All made in Belize. Yeah. yeah. Made our jackets Belizean now. product, like you Belizean call it. Product, <laughs> like, like the track Belizean product. Yeah. Another fine track again from Belize. Yeah. Belizean product. Belizean product.